strong childhood memories mixed with a creative spirit can bring a touch of the old and a pinch of the new to your dinner table. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. When I was a kid, I spent a lot of time in my mom's kitchen, and I loved every minute of it. Gabe hangs out in my kitchen a lot too, except when mom's here to visit. I think today I'm gonna play around with some of mom's classics, evolve the flavors a bit, which is easy when you begin with a tried and true recipe. That's the best place to experiment in your own kitchen. My mom was coming and I really remember her beef stew, so I got the best beef stewing meat I could possibly find. Short ribs. These are the big guns. I hope she's impressed. Now my mom likes to call it beef stew, but the chef in me prefers braised short ribs. But don't be fooled by the fancy name. A braise is just a stew. And like any good stew, I like to begin mine with a big, beefy, hearty red wine, like a Pinot Noir. This'll make a nice stew and a nice braise. Hey, chocolate chips, I got an idea. Whenever I smell chocolate chip cookies baking, I always think of my mom's kitchen because I used to come home from school and the whole place would just be perfumed with the smell of baking chocolate chip cookies. I think it's time to return the flavor. You know what? A beef stew can wait. I've got something more important to do. I'm gonna need some butter, a couple of eggs, some flour, some white sugar, brown sugar, baking powder and baking soda. But here's a couple of things that I add to my cookies that my mom never thought of. Oats, corn syrup, I'll explain. I begin by creaming my sugar and butter together. I've got a stick of butter. Go with about half a cup each of white and brown sugar. Now once the butter and sugar have combined together and whipped up like that, then it's time to add a couple of eggs. I'm actually adding all my wet ingredients right now. The eggs, the vanilla extract, teaspoon or so, and a little bit of corn syrup. The corn syrup browns faster than the white or brown sugar. That way the cookies come out of the oven faster and they're chewier. They have a nicer texture. Okay, that's all mixing together nicely. Now, there's one other ingredient that's very important to disperse evenly as well, and that is the leaveners, the baking soda, the baking powder. So, I'm gonna need a full cup of flour and a half teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. Now, here's one more dry ingredient that my mom never used, oatmeal. I used to stir it in just like that, whole, but now I grind it up first. Check this out. So I'm gonna use a full cup of oats. And I'll just dump that right in here. At this point, all I wanna do is stir the flour into the batter. I don't wanna whisk it in too much because that would start to develop the gluten in the flour and make the cookies tough. I'm not making bread. There we go. And now for the chocolate chips. I usually add at least a cup or so, but I never bother measuring because, hey, there's no such thing as too many chocolate chips in the cookies. Okay. If my mom walked in right now and saw this mess, I think she'd be a little disappointed. I better straighten up a little.
So, at this point, all I do is just basically take big spoonfuls of the batter, pop it right here, just like that. Now, I'm going to bake these off in a 375 degree oven. Sugar browns at that temperature. If I went any higher, I'd start to run the risk of burning the cookies, and I certainly don't want to do that. Now for the beef. Check out these short ribs. You know, any stew has three basic parts. The base, the body, and the braise. The base, of course, is all that nice brown flavor that we put in at the beginning of the cooking process. That's what I'm going to get started on now. The base is the only time that you have the high heat necessary to make caramelized brown flavors. Those flavors are critical for the flavor of a stew. That's why it's so key to brown everything at the beginning of the process. Hey, the only thing that smells better than a kitchen full of fresh baked cookies is a kitchen full of fresh baked cookies and beef stew. And you never know, I just might have another new flavor or two up my sleeve for Mom and Gabe. My mom's here for a few days, so naturally, we're all pretty excited. You know what, Gabe? My cookie's as good as your cookie. Very good cookie. I learned my tried and true approach to life from her in the kitchen. Because when you know a dish well, it's a great place to start experimenting. Who knows? You just might impress yourself in your own kitchen. Supper tonight will be a magnificent beef stew, the best I can create. I'm using beefy short ribs, and of course, I'm browning and caramelizing them. The flavor base is basically everything I put into this pan before I start adding the liquids. So to continue the base, I'm going to add some aromatic vegetables. And this is pretty standard. I always use onions, a little bit of garlic, and some carrots and some celery. Now chefs have all kinds of fancy names when it comes to cutting vegetables. Batonette, julienne, chiffonade, brunoise. But you know, really, all those names mean is bite size. So at this point, all I'm gonna do is just simply take these vegetables and dump them on in. But you know, I don't really need to brown them deeply. I've added so much brown flavor by caramelizing the beef that I'm just not feeling like I need to brown the vegetables that much. So while those saute down a bit, time for some garlic. Okay, the next step is pretty simple too. Now it's time to start adding the body, the liquids. So the beef goes back into the pot. Now here's something else I do a little differently than my mom. Today I'm using a nice big beefy Pinot Noir. Here's one more thing I like to add to my stews to give them body, a can of tomato paste. Just stir that in a little bit, it'll dissolve all by itself as the stew simmers. And now, one more thing for the body of this stew. Check it out, frozen beef stock cubes. My mom taught me to do this. Hey, when you're gonna gear up to do something like making beef stock, you might as well make a lot. It's just as easy to make a lot as a little, so begin with 10 pounds or so of assorted meaty bones, oxtails, short ribs, or whatever you can get your hands on, just as long as they're meaty. Throw in a few pounds of aromatic onions, carrots, and celery for flavor. And if you have any mushrooms, throw those in too. They'll add lots of earthy goodness. Carefully roast the works in a nice hot 400 degree oven until everything is evenly caramelized. Toss the brown flavors into a large pot with a large can of tomato paste and more aromatic vegetables. Add a bottle or two of hearty red wine 
and a handful of aromatic herbs like bay leaf, rosemary, or thyme. Cover the works completely with water and simmer gently. After at least three hours of simmering and flavor infusion, strain the works. Then begin concentrating it. Return it to the boil and reduce rapidly until half the volume evaporates. This is beef broth. Freeze in cubes for handy convenience. There we go, five or six should do it. Now before I pop a tight fitting lid on here, I wanna add one more thing, some aromatic herb flavor. Bay leaves, check that out. I'm gonna pop two or three of these in there. And what else do I have? Rosemary, thyme. I think I'll add some thyme. But you know what? Thyme is so delicate that if I added that right now, most of its fresh aromatic flavor would be long gone by the time that stew is done. I think I'll hold on to this and add it at the last second. You want to keep all the moisture and flavor inside the pot. On goes the lid. And now I'll wait, oh, I don't know, two hours or so until that meat is nice and tender. And that's plenty of time to get some other flavors ready for the table. And for me, my all-purpose go-for-it potato is always the Yukon Gold. I just love the yellow, meaty texture of these potatoes. My mom used to bake these, roast them, fry them, and boil them, but she never steamed them. And since I feel like making mashed potatoes today, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I can't think of a better dish to play around with than mashed potatoes. They're a vehicle for carrying flavors. Anything under the sun is fair game. My mom's an awesome cook. She taught me how to play in the kitchen. She let me discover on my own that life is also full of endless possibilities. Like a simple beef stew. And I just happen to have the best darn beef stew ever simmering away. I sure hope it measures up to mom's. And like hers, mine has three parts. A beefy short rib and aromatic vegetable flavor base, a Pinot Noir body to die for, and a comfortable place to slowly braise. My kitchen. And now for the mashed potatoes. This has got to be the easiest thing in the world to play with. There's so many different flavors you can whip into potatoes. But you know, my mom's having dinner with us today. I think I'm gonna stick to the tried and true. A little bit of butter, but not just any butter, brown butter. In essence, butter has a little bit of sugar in it, and once you cook off the water that's also in butter, the sugar starts to brown, and it adds a ton of flavor to the butter. See how that's foaming up like that? In a minute or two, all of the water will evaporate out of the butter, and the foam will start to drop. Now the foam dropped, and now it's foamed a second time, and once it foams the second time, then it's starting to brown. That's when you start paying attention. You have to be careful because it goes from brown butter to black butter pretty fast. So you gotta have a way of stopping the cooking quickly. One way to do it is to cool it down with something like milk. Now that the potatoes are tender, just dump them right in. Add my brown butter and milk. A little bit of salt and pepper. And there's one more very important flavor to add. Nutmeg, one of my earliest childhood memories. My mom used to put this in potatoes all the time, which now as a chef I know is very French and very tasty. But I also know that anytime I smell nutmeg, it takes me right back to my mom's kitchen. It's amazing how powerfully connected scent and memories are.
We've all experienced a vivid flashback sparked by a particular scent. Baby powder, a lover's perfume, the scent of burning leaves. We tend to underestimate smell as we see and hear the world around us. But from an evolutionary perspective, it's actually one of the oldest parts of the brain. Scientists know that as a scent hits the nose, it triggers a cascade of sensations. You instantly remember a graphic memory that evokes another time, grandma's apple pie, or place. You remember that little bakery your parents used to take you to for a treat? In fact, what we think of as taste is actually 99% smell. Next time you're having a bite to eat, try pinching your nose. You'll remember what I mean. Spices tend to be one of the most potently flavored ingredients we consume. Stronger even than herbs, they're strictly enjoyed for their intense, distinct flavors. Kind of like life. The more flavorful it is, the more memorable it is. I feel like I'm five years old again, hanging out in my mom's kitchen. Incredible. Nutmeg. I don't want to put too much in. It's pretty powerfully flavored. That should do it right there. A pinch or two. Now the only thing left to do is smash away. I remember the first time my mom made a salad using baby spinach. I thought, hey, you can't do this. You're supposed to cook spinach. But as it turns out, baby spinach is a wonderful salad green. Here's something that my mom used to do with salads all the time. She used to put fruit in it. Apples or fruit in general are wonderful in salads. Okay, I'll do the same thing with the pear. Now here's a couple of contrasting flavors that'll go great in that salad. A red onion and some walnuts. The walnuts are easy. I'm just going to dump some right in. And now for my mom's famous raspberry vinaigrette. I used to think it was so avant-garde, but now I know it's just easy. Like all my dressings, this one begins with one part vinegar. I'm going to use red wine vinegar because, hey, raspberries are red. That should do it. One part vinegar. And now I'm going to add two parts olive oil and one part something else. The basic ratio, though, is always one part vinegar and three parts of everything else, including the oil. A handful of frozen raspberries, a little bit of salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of spicy pepper. A little shot of this should jazz this right up. My mom's going to be so proud. I love cooking for my mom. She's here for the weekend to hang out with her grandson. So I'm in the kitchen cooking up a storm and reliving the glory days. And as usual, I'm playing around a bit. Even though all these dishes used to be my mom's, she doesn't mind that they've evolved a bit and become mine. Like a baby spinach salad with lots of fruit flavors, apple, pear, raspberry vinaigrette, or mashed potatoes with butter, but not just any butter, brown butter. And of course, beef stew. But it does need some salt and pepper. And some fresh thyme. And of course, I've waited till the end to add the fresh thyme because if I had put this in the beginning and it had simmered all afternoon, all the fresh thyme flavor would be long gone. Look at those short ribs. Just look at that. Can you see the flavor? Oh, I can't wait for supper. 
And now I can dress this salad. I didn't put the vinaigrette on earlier because it would have wilted the greens and I don't want that to happen. Some raspberry vinaigrette. Doesn't that look beautiful? Just toss this up a bit. That looks great. Brown butter mashed potatoes with nutmeg. There we go. Take the pot straight to the table, why not? Oh yeah, that fresh thyme is coming through loud and clear. You know, you can create new memories for your family with a fresh look at some old favorites, right here in the kitchen and out there in life. Begin your creative journey in a familiar place and fill your family's table flavors and fun. Hey buddy, some of mom's old mashed potatoes with a little bit of brown butter. I actually found him sitting in the icebox one day. <laughs> so let me get this straight, you were actually encouraging me to play in the kitchen. Now tell me, when I was three years old, would I just come and sit at the table like a good boy? Oh, every time, in my dreams. Can I sit at your table too? This is potatoes, you wanna try some of these? Wants to eat, Ma. First words out of their mouth when they come home from school.